We'll talk about uh, the impact of the chip crisis uh, and more with Sunil Bora, the ED and Group CFO of Minda Industries Limited. Mr. Bora, thanks so much for joining us today on the show. So let's talk first about the semiconductor chip shortage. We now see a lot of PV companies um, saying that, look, because of this problem, we're going to have to cut production. So Maruti, M&M, Tata Motors, all of them have a cut production drastically. Maruti, in fact, has cut production by 60% this month. So let's understand the impact on you. Um, what have you been seeing? Any delay, cancellations of new orders? So definitely you are right. The semiconductor impact is across the industry and we are part of the global uh, supply chain. So obviously we can't be insulated uh, to that extent because uh, if uh, OEM is impacted and has to sort of uh, reduce its production, it has a direct impact on us to the extent we are directly supplying any component which goes into the vehicle, which volumes are sort of getting impacted. So yes, there is definitely some impact uh, directly. So what is happening is that people are also trying to see how we minimize the impact of a semiconductor. How do we maybe produce uh, vehicles because demand remains strong. So how do we produce vehicles maybe with minimum semiconductor or minimum requirement of electronics, maybe a little less uh, top end, little more high end of that uh, model, whatever. So we are trying to see how we can minimize the impact, but yes, there is an impact and that also is different from customer to customer. I think you have, uh, as you rightly mentioned, there are uh, customers who have openly said that there is some impact, but there are pockets also where there is maybe minimum or no impact. So it all depends on customer to customer. So for us, uh, we definitely, there is a direct impact to the extent it goes into a vehicle uh, which is getting volume being dropped. But for a, a person or a, a Minda like a company where we are having access or we are supplier to almost all the major OEMs in the country, there, there, are, there are some uh, spaces which are doing good also. So to that extent, it also helps us minimize that impact. Plus, what we also have is a lot of our uh, exports or a lot of our aftermarket that also demand remains very strong and uh, we are able to meet our supplies, uh, meet our commitments. In terms of uh, pricing, there is also impact in terms of uh, the cost. Some of the cost we are in talking to our customers, how do we see that there is a pass through and we make sure that there is no impact on the uh, volume per se. So yes, there is some impact, but there are some uh, white spaces as well where the things are a uh, little better or maybe minimal impact to some extent. And, and what are those spaces? You know, you supply, of course, to a whole host of OEMs across the board. Um, so what are the, you know, which are the OEMs that have been, have seen a lower impact of this crisis? And for them, you know, things are still relatively better. Right. So if you see from segment perspective, I would say the two-wheeler space is somewhere which will have less impact of a semiconductor shortage versus maybe a, a PV. In PV itself, there might be some customers who are doing better, some customers who are able to maybe get long-term contracts in place, but impact is there uh, across at least in uh, the PV segment. But in the two-wheeler space, uh, the impact is, uh, I would say, significantly lower than what we are seeing in the PV space. Right. So what then is your plan right now, Sunil, in terms of adding more products to your portfolio going forward and how, um, you know, or rather which segments your focus area is going to be in? Right, right. So uh, first of all, uh, as we all know that this semiconductor shortage issue, whatever is there, it's, I'm sure it's definitely there for a short term, it's not even there for a medium term. There are uh, speculations that it might get uh, extend to maybe second quarter of uh, next calendar year, but uh, I'm sure things will uh, smoothen up. Uh, it's like uh, uh, there are new productions which are coming on board. There are some deep bottlenecking which has been happening. So things should start getting improved maybe by middle of next year. And in terms of our strategy, in terms of new products, as you asked, so the products which we have been existingly working, we have been working uh, exhaustively on strengthening our existing uh, verticals. We are growing significantly. We are going uninterrupted in terms of our capacity expansions. Earlier this uh, calendar year, we have announced setting up three new plants, uh, we are going full hog on that because we firmly believe that uh, the demand for those components or those products are there in medium to long term. So we don't want this short term uh, sort of a speed breaker to impact our medium to long term growth. In terms of new products, uh, we are also working on a lot of EV components per se. So all our products existing 
are as you know that that goes into ic engine also or a vs6 engine also or ev also be it seating be it lighting be it acoustics be it wheels etc so we from that perspective are uh, i would say a better placed uh, from getting benefit of the ev boom so all existing products goes into ev also so from that perspective our existing products we are insulated and in terms of ev we have identified seven large uh, key products of which two are already under production which are going into ev and uh, two or three we are expecting to get commission within this uh, financial year so we are pretty confident of uh, sort of getting these products online in next uh, 12 to 18 months and for us ev is more of an opportunity and we are trying to see how we can fasten or shorten that development cycle Sure. You've been pretty good, Sunil, at collaborating with others as well. I was just reading about your deal with Harita. Um, for the rest of the financial year as well, can we expect these kind of deals to be struck? And if so, what would be the focus area? I don't want to speculate, uh, honestly, because uh, M&A is something which you consistently work on and it is an area where we are very, very conservative and our success rate might be very, very low, I would say, compared to maybe some other people in the country. But uh, whatever we look for M&A, we we'll look for a lot of uh, strategic uh, benefits. Maybe there might be an advantage of customer, there might be advantage of technology, or there might be leverage because of Minda uh, adding uh, more customers to their profile. So we look at various aspects and uh, the name you took, Harita, obviously you know that uh, that acquisition also happened uh, recently and we are pretty confident of sort of doubling that company in the next few years. So. When we look for MA, we look for a lot of things. Uh, it is not only the top line. We look at uh, overall shareholder value and overall returns, and we see how we add value to that uh, target company or how do we add value to existing businesses. So it's very difficult to comment on uh, what will be in the near future in MA, but we continue to work on a few things, and things might materialize and things might not. Okay. Uh, Sunil, let's talk about the export opportunity as well that you see because, um, you know, largely uh, what we are hearing from many players and not necessarily in the auto space but generally as well is that the export opportunity for India looks, um, you know, very strong. Uh, yours is a product, yours is a portfolio that does have a good export market. So how do you see that market, um, you know, growing? Um, you know, the way the world order as well is changing. China, of course, is still very, very dominant. But now countries and, you know, buyers are looking at markets outside of China. Best option then being India. So how are you seeing your export market? No, definitely, it's a big opportunity and we have been focusing export a lot. So for us, export, we meet through two uh, objectives. One is we try and see if we can export locally or if the customer wants, we go closer to the customer. So we have a presence already in uh, six other countries outside of India and where we have manufacturing plants. So overall, our global uh, revenue outside of India is almost 15, 16%. And we are strengthening our uh, marketing in all these geographies where we are present and seeing how we can capitalize on those presence for the last more than a decade where we are maybe in ASEAN or in Europe or in uh, America. So we are strengthening our marketing team. We are actually getting good traction in terms of getting more RFQs, more RFIs uh, to sort of uh, bid for. We have been successful recently in getting some of the businesses for our seating division, some of uh, for our switching division, for a lighting division for exports. So exports is an area where uh, we are uh, very, very optimistic and we believe that exports as a segment uh, can actually outperform our domestic demand. Well, the up and coming sector, of course, within the automobile space is also EV. Uh, we have, of course, the news that uh, Tesla is seen to be making its way into India. Um, now, one thing is certain that India's transition to EVs may take a little time. But how are you preparing for that long term transition? No, as I said uh, a little while back, we are actually working very, very aggressively on uh, EV because we believe as a segment, uh, maybe Yes, uh, PVs will also be there, but uh, within EV space, two-wheeler and three-wheeler is the general consensus may actually see a faster adoption than a PV because maybe the charging infrastructure or maybe the cost or various other reasons. So we have also, while we are working on all the segments, we have put in more energy towards uh, two-wheeler and three-wheeler space. And that's where I was referring to that we are working on seven key components. And if I see from that overall kit value perspective, if I add our existing kit value of two-wheeler of almost like seven, 8,000 rupees a vehicle, it can go north of 25,000 plus kind of a number. 
So that's the space uh, we are working on. We see that how we can capitalize on that opportunity. Good thing is that two or three components are already going into the EVs on road. And I'm talking about new products. I'm not talking about existing products because our existing product, be it seating, be it speech lamp, they are already going into a EV, EV vehicle also. So we are getting more traction. We are getting more uh, opportunities in the EV space. And that's what we are working on currently. Maybe prioritizing in two-wheeler and three-wheeler and also then uh, aggressively working on the four-wheeler space. Okay. Well, Sunil, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning on ET Now. Let's hope the semiconductor chip crisis is behind us soon enough. Um, you know, thank you once again for joining. Thank you. Thank you.